are you guys a big fan of the growl well guess what the cr56 amax just arrived on the scene and it is a bully like straight bully and we're definitely going to go into the numbers in a little bit to prove that by the way i also did cover the fennec if you're interested in a video on that make sure you click the link in the description if you missed it so the cr can be unlocked at tier 31 from the season 4 battle pass and i'm just going to tell you right off the bat this is a top tier weapon that you must grind for because this one is actually going to change the meta in the game so basically today i'm going to be helping you get to know this weapon and what makes it so good and we're going to cover some basic stats as well as show you different recoil patterns of the attachments that do control the recoil on this weapon and also lastly we're going to go over a recommended best class setup that i do suggest that you guys use on this weapon in order to fully optimize its performance if you could do me a favor and drop a like on this video let's try to hit a like goal of 500 likes i would really appreciate it make sure to subscribe if you're new around here especially if you're part of this demographic right here you constantly watch my videos but you just haven't subscribed yet make it official today join turbo nation what are you waiting for man all right so the cr56 amax has an rpm of 620 rounds per minute now that's not too bad and it's not too good it's kind of like an okay fire rate however the damage profiles of this weapon are absolutely amazing and we're gonna get into that in just a little bit so the magazine size is 30 so that's about pretty standard for an assault rifle and the reload speed is slightly on the slower side at 2.8 seconds and the aim down side speed is around 259 milliseconds. So the first thing right off the bat that you're gonna notice when you're handling this weapon, that the mobility is not that great. Aim down side speed is kind of slow, but it is a very dangerous weapon. And of course we are gonna be putting on attachments that do optimize it as much as possible. So first let's talk about the base damage ranges of this weapon and how much of a bully this weapon actually is. And we're gonna go ahead and compare it to some stats of the growl as well. Since everybody is using the growl and everybody thinks the growl is king, well, you know what? <laughs> now the growl has a run for its money now. So as far as the range up to 22 meters, it's a two shot kill to the head and a three shot kill to the body. For the ranges of 23 meters to 40 meters it's a two shot kill to the head still and then a three shot kill to the chest and this is where it gets a little interesting it becomes a four shot kill to the stomach and the limbs so right off the bat from this data you need to be aware that if you're going to engage from that 23 to 40 meters so that would be around mid to long range in multiplayer you have to keep in mind that if you want to melt your enemies as fast as possible you're going to want to aim for the head or the upper chest so that is one thing to keep in mind however you know that time to kill to the stomach and the limbs is still pretty good and we're going to list the time to kill as well so you guys get an idea of how it matches up against the growl anything 40 meters and beyond it's a three shot kill to the head and a four shot kill to the body so after 40 meters and beyond you no longer need to worry about getting a shot to the upper body in order to minimize that time to kill all right so now let's put into some perspective of exactly how dangerous this weapon can actually be so if you're going to put it up against the growl one thing that i do have to clarify that's interesting about the growl is that it only has one damage profile up to 35 meters so it's going to be a three shot kill regardless up to 35 meters whether you're going for the head or the body now the thing about the cr56 amax is that from that really close range up to 22 meters that's like a shoot house type of map right there it's going to be a two shot kill to the head and a three shot kill to the body with a much faster time to kill of 194 milliseconds to the body versus the growl it's going to be 247 milliseconds to the body at that same exact range and then if you're going to go for that headshot it's 97 milliseconds to the head versus the growl at 164 milliseconds to the head so the growl it's not really that effective up close the cr56 amax is definitely going to melt the growl in those situation as well all right and one final stat line of the growl versus the amax that i do want to point out is that if you are playing warzone some good news the amax is actually going to shred as well versus the growl because it's a four shot kill to the body from 40 meters and beyond and then the growl is going to be a five shot kill to the body 40 meters and beyond they do take the same amount of shots it takes to kill to the head from those ranges however think about it in a practical sense are you actually going to get headshots from 40 plus meters and beyond in warzone no you're most likely going to be hitting the opponent's body therefore the edge goes to the amax it's just more practical in those situations now there is one small caveat of the amax that i do want to stress is that like i said earlier the handling and the mobility of the weapon is just too slow that's why the growl would probably be the more 
more popular weapon to use in people's hands because of how easy it is to control and it's just user friendly as well it's got little to no recoil but if we're talking about strictly damage the edge is going to go to the amax now one other thing that i did notice about the amax is that it has quite a bit of recoil to it we're gonna go ahead and do some recoil pattern testing all right so here is going to be the fun part where we're gonna be testing live the recoil patterns as well as comparing it to the attachments that i do recommend i'm using my recommended attachments already minus the attachments that do control the recoil so just wanted to clarify that oh geez why is my dual shock battery always low man i'm always on the sticks man i guess that's what it is so anyways uh we're gonna fire the weapon first we're not gonna try to counteract that recoil at all and we're just gonna let it do its thing all right and as you can see it just goes straight up vertically and the bullet pattern is okay actually it's not too bad as far as the recoil pattern goes on the amax uh but uh, as you can see here there is some separation between these bullets and of course we do want it to be a lot more in line with each other and more consistent all right so for the next part i am going to be actually trying to control that recoil all right so taking a first glance at it it's actually not too bad I mean, it is kind of an oblong shape. The shape that I'm trying to personally go for is more of like a circular shape. All right, so now that we've got our recommended attachments, we're using the Ranger foregrip as well as a Zodiac barrel. And some wall testing did happen for me to be able to choose which attachments I felt were right. We're just gonna let it do its thing and we're gonna pull it and we're gonna place it right here. Wow, like immediately, immediately, you can tell a huge difference. The bullets are a lot more consistent here. They go up the wall and they stop right there. There is less vertical recoil as compared to the original one without the attachments that I do recommend. All right, so now let's go ahead and try to control that recoil. All right, and as you can see, huge difference right there between the original one right here where i control the recoil versus this one i mean that's just plain as day right there and it's a huge reason why you need to be using these specific attachments and next we're going to be going over really briefly the difference between the different attachments that do control the recoil so we have here listed the different types of attachments that do claim to control your recoil here now i did leave out some other stuff like the tactical foregrip for example it's already common knowledge that the tactical foregrip does absolutely nothing to help you out with recoil and as far as the other barrels that are offered here the zodiac barrel was the only one that described that said that it was good for recoil control so that's why you only see the certain type of attachments here so i just wanted to clarify that so yeah so here we got green for base obviously and the compensator is here as well and we got the zodiac barrel which is the one that i chose and i'm going to explain that in a little bit here and here's the commando and the merc foregrip ranger foregrip and the operator foregrip as well the ranger foregrip looks really good here you can already tell right off the bat compared to the other ones here if you take a closer look here these dots here in the middle they're a lot more consistent they're a lot more in line with each other versus the commando foregrip you know it's actually got a little bit higher uh, vertical recoil here compared to the others so you know of course we want to minimize that as much as we possibly can especially if you're engaging in long range and you're firing your weapon pretty heavily you know you of course you do want to keep that to a minimum and over here it, there's a lot of separation going on in the merc foregrip now the main reason why i picked the zodiac barrel is because obviously it's the only barrel that does offer that recoil control also that damage range and that bullet velocity because if you look at the other barrels they don't offer damage range on it or recoil control it's pretty much an easy clear choice of course you want to increase that damage range versus not having that damage range boost at all and you know while we're actually here talking about the zodiac barrel we might as well talk about the actual percentage of range that it does increase so so it increases your damage range by about 37 percent so that two shot kill range is going to be extended from that 22 meter range all the way up to 32 meters and then the same thing goes for that three shot kill to the upper chest it's going to be extended all the way up to 32 meters as well from 22 meters so so it's just kind of obvious at this point like if you really want to maximize the performance of this weapon and the stopping power so to speak not the actual attachment you definitely want to put on that zodiac barrel so that you can get that extension of that damage range and that's very important 
and that's why I chose that combination of the Zodiac Barrel and the Ranger Foregrip. All right, so this is the result that we get. This is exactly what you saw earlier in the video. So it's clear as day, the evidence is here that this is the perfect combination that you should be using if you want to control that recoil as much as you possibly can. Finally, here we are. We are going to be talking about the attachments that I do recommend in order to optimize this weapon as much as you possibly can. For the muzzle, we are going to be using the monolithic suppressor. So this is going to give us that sound suppression as well as damage range. It does increase your range by about 8%. And that sound suppression is also going to be huge because this weapon fires really loudly and you know what the last thing you want is to be hunted down by your enemies who know exactly where your location's at because they see you pinging on the enemy compass next for the barrel this one is a no-brainer we just talked about this we're going to be using the zodiac s440 and this one's going to give us about 37 percent increase in our damage range if you take a quick look at the other barrels here the intruder aimed on side speed movement speed but has a con of bullet velocity and recoil control bullet velocity has a lot to do with with your damage range as well and why would you want more recoil on your gun you know it's just gonna make it harder for you to hit your targets and uh the squall it only has aim down sight speed and it has a negative of bullet velocity the most obvious choice would be to pick the zodiac as it offers these three pros right here so moving on to the rear grip we're going to be using the stippled wrap this is going to give you that aim down sight speed as well as that sprint to fire speed so so going back to what i said about how this weapon is naturally slow in mobility as well as aim down sight speed this is going to help out a little bit it's not going to help out a lot but it's going to help out a little bit uh, but the main thing that we want here is that sprint to fire speed you know because that's going to be very important we don't want to be at a big disadvantage in close quarter combat situations now the one thing that you do also have to take note of when using this weapon since it has a really slow mobility to it is to make sure you're always assuming that there's going to be enemies around the corner because especially with how fast paced multiplayer can be there literally can be an enemy showing up around that corner at any second so so you always want to make sure that you're aiming down sights down lines of sight where there could possibly be enemies every corner that you turn you want to be pre-aimed so that you're going to be ready for that gunfight whether it happens or not all right so for the ammunition i'm using the 45 round magazine unfortunately i wish that they had a 50 or 60 round magazine but you know this is as much as they can give us at the moment you know this is this is completely optional you know you don't need all 45 rounds to melt your opponents however i feel like having 45 round mags just gives you the most confidence as possible if you're going to go against multiple enemies at a time plus with the reload speed is really slow so you don't want to be caught reloading your weapon if you only have 30 rounds in your magazine so for the under barrel we are using the ranger foregrip as stated earlier and shown in the video all right so that's about it for the class setup so some final thoughts on the weapon yes i do think that the ground now has competition here and when you look at the numbers on paper of the cr56 versus the growl it's clear that the cr56 is going to knock the growl out of the park however i think the user friendliness of the growl is what is going to win people's hearts at the end of the day because you know let's face it the cr56 amax it's got a really slow aim down side speed its mobility is not that great as well whereas the growl is the complete opposite it has a faster reload speed it has a faster aim down side speed and it has better handling as well so let me know down below in the comments are you team growl or are you gonna be team cr56 so yeah guys make sure to leave a like on this video if you did find this video helpful it will let me know that this is the kind of content that you want to continue to see and make sure you subscribe if you are new around here join turbo nation today man and i really appreciate all the support you guys have been showing on these videos it really means a lot to me and yeah i hope you guys have a good day and i'll see you guys in the next one peace